What is going on guys and welcome back to another video. Today's video is all about Law 12 fouls and misconduct. So what we're gonna go what we're gonna be going through today is what is a direct free kick, what is an indirect free kick, um, when to give yellow or red cards, and uh, why you would give a yellow or red card. Um, so yeah, anyway, before we get into the video, please like and subscribe if you do enjoy the video, but let's get into it. So first, direct free kicks. A direct free kick is awarded if a player commits any of the following offences against an opponent in a manner considered by the referee to be careless, reckless or excessive force. So any of the reasons listed below would, would be reasons to give a direct free kick. So the first one is charging or charging at an opponent. Uh, there's jumping at the opponent, kick or attempt to kick. He doesn't have to make contact if he's attempted to kick an opponent, still a free kick. A push, strike or attempt to strike, so that's punch, headbutt, anything like that. Um, tackle or challenge, that's just a normal challenge. You go in for a tackle, he's missed the ball, got a player, uh, direct free kick. Trip or attempt to trip, again, doesn't have to make contact. Any attempt to trip a player up is a free kick. Handling the ball deliberately is a, obviously a di direct free kick. Holding an opponent, pulling on their shirt, keeping them from moving. Impeding opponent with contact. Um, and spitting at an opponent is also direct free kick. Moving on to the careless and reckless excessive force. If an offence involves contact, it is penalised by a direct free kick or penalty kick. That's obvious. But careless free kick is when you just give the free kick and you move on. It's when a player shows a lack of attention or consideration when making a challenge or acts without precaution. No disciplinary sanction is needed. So basically, it's just they've gone in for a tackle, they haven't got the ball, it's just a normal free kick, you get on with the game. Uh, reckless is when a player acts with disregard to the danger to or consequences for an opponent and must be cautioned. So a reckless challenge is one that should be cautioned. We all know what a caution will challenge is mostly, but that is if a, an assessor asks you why, or an observer asks you why you gave a yellow card, you can say that the challenge was a reckless challenge and he has no regard for the danger of an opponent. Using excessive force is when a player exceeds the necessary use of force and or endangers the safety of an opponent and must be sent off. So a challenge that dangers the opponent uh, and has no regard for the safety of that opponent should be a red card. And again, you use this, if an observer asks why you get a red card for a challenge, you can say the player used excessive force and he endangered the safety of an opponent. Okay, reasons to give an indirect free kick. Uh, so if the player is in a dangerous manner, so such as high foot uh, is a one big reason for that. So, so if there's a high foot, it's an indirect free kick. Don't be giving a direct free kick. Impedes the progress of an opponent without any contact being made. So he's just stopping him from getting the ball. There's no contact, but he's not playing the ball. Uh, that's an indirect free kick. Uh, dissent, using offensive, insulting or abusive language or other verbal offences, also an indirect free kick. As you know, there's been no challenge made, there's been no contact, indirect free kick. Uh, if they prevent the goalkeeper from releasing the ball from the hands or kick, um, or is like blocking the goalkeeper in the process of releasing the ball, that is an indirect free kick. You know, when the uh, players are standing in front of the keeper, not allowing him to uh, release the ball. Uh, jumping in front of him and stuff like that as an indirect free kick. Um, commits any, any offence uh, not mentioned in the laws for which players stop to caution or send off a player. So if you've stopped the game uh, for something that's happened somewhere else, like a punch, um, which is not due to, which is not from the player with the ball, the keeper, then um, that is an indirect free kick where the offence occurred. So an indirect free kick is awarded if a goalkeeper inside their penalty area commits any of the following offences. So if the goalkeeper controls the ball with their hands and they have it in their hands for more than six seconds before releasing it, we all know that one, six seconds for the goalkeeper. So the goalkeeper's had the ball in their hands, that is an indirect free kick. If they have the ball in their hands, release it, put it down and then pick it back up, indirect free kick. Uh, if it's been deliberately kicked to the goalkeeper by a teammate and they pick it up, um, that is obviously an indirect free kick, a pass back as uh, people like to call it, and then receiving it directly from a throw-in and picking it up for, um, is also an indirect free kick. Now, moving on to cautionable offences. Uh, this is any player, you know, if they do this, 
then that is a cautionable offence. You must caution every time. Uh, so make sure you do this, especially if you're being observed. So a player is cautioned if guilty of delaying the restart of play. That is like putting their foot out, standing in front of the ball during a free kick to make sure that no, no one can play it. Um, dissent is another cautionable offence. If they are shouting at you, screaming, swearing, offensive things, then obviously yellow card. Uh, entering and then re-entering or deliberately leaving the field of play without the referee's permission is a cautionable offence. No one can enter or leave the field of play without the referee's permission. Uh, failing to respect the required distance when play, if restarted with a corner kick, free kick or thrown, is a yellow card. So, you know, there's a free kick, you do the 10 yards, and then moving forward, you can yellow card someone. Uh, persistent offences, you know, there's about one player who's keep fouling five free kicks in the space of one minute, then uh, caution, or if it's a team build up, you know, if there's like um, <clears throat> uh, loads of fouls going in from one side, and uh, it's getting a bit persistent or too much, yellow card. Uh, unsporting behaviour is another yellow card. That is anything that, uh, you know, you deem as unsporting. I can't tell you what is unsporting, but anything you feel is. A, a substitute or substituted player is cautioned if guilty of delaying the restart of play. Obviously, if they're running onto the pitch, delaying the restart of play, yellow card. Uh, again, dissent, entering or re-entering full of play and unsporting behaviour. You can yellow card a substitute. Uh, moving on to sending off offences. A player substitute or substitute a player who commits any of the following offences is sent off. Denying the opposing team a goal or an obvious goal scoring opportunity by deliberately handling the ball, uh, except obviously a goalkeeper within the penalty area, is a sending off offence. Uh, any handball that is deliberate and is obviously going to be a goal or turn into a goal scoring opportunity has to be a red card. Uh, denying a goal or an obvious goal scoring opportunity to an opponent whose overall movement is towards the offender's goal by an offence punishable by a free kick. So a dog so um, thing, if their players run into the wrong goal, it looks like he's going to score, I'd say over 60, 70, I'd say over like by about 80% chance that they should score a uh, red card. Um, running towards play, not a lot of recovering defenders, maybe a one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, last defender, things like that. Also, a red card. Uh, serious foul play, so anyone excessive force tackle and uh, endangering an opponent, serious foul play, red card offence. Uh, spitting at an opponent is, of course, a red card offence. <clears throat> Violent conduct, a punch, a kick, any sort of abuse is a red card. Using offensive, insulting or abusive language, red card. Receiving a second caution in the same match, of course, is a red card. And a player, substitute or substituted player who's been sent off must leave the vicinity of the field of play and the technical area. They shouldn't be seen by anyone on the pitch or the surrounding area. They have to leave the building. Anyway, guys, that is the end of this video. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed it. Let me know any feedback or comments you have from this video. And I'll see you guys next time.